Okay, so Marxism is a social and economic re-evaluation of the Gnostic heresies from early Christianity and before. The Gnostic heresies say that the, the God presented in Genesis is actually the architect of the world, the demiurge, that's from the Greek for builder. And so he built the world, but he's not actually God. God is the perfect spirit. We are not separate from God because nothing is separate from God. But the demiurge built the world, the material world, which is in illusion state separate from God, and he imprisoned man's souls inside. And so the fruit in the tree or of, of the tree in the garden is supposed to confer to man the knowledge that he is what he is, that he's actually pure spirit and inseparable from God. And the demiurge is basically the jailer of man in Eden and doesn't want them to know that. And so it's actually an evil character. And then when, when Eve disobeys and Adam follows and they, they eat from the fruit and then they become to know a little bit of this, all of a sudden, what happens? The demiurge or God in the, in the Bible flips out, throws them into the material world to suffer, to live by the toil of their back, the sweat of their brow, the pain of childbirth, and so on. Uh, the, the wages of sin or death, all of this comes in upon man. And what the Gnostics believe is that we are falsely imprison, imprisoned in the world by an evil demon posing as God. What Marx did was said, the bourgeois class as a social and economic phenomenon actually imprisons the exploited proletariat class in their social values, in their way of thinking, so that they can become exploitable, alienated workers who will make the capitalists more money. This same idea gets recapitulated that there are people who, like you and me, who went around and said, you know what? You're pretty normal. I'm pretty normal. We're normal people. But those people are deviants, weirdos, degenerates, perverts, or queer in the academic literature. And they don't deserve the full benefits of society unless they conform to our values. Encapsulation, queer theory should be considered queer Marxism. Queer theory is really queer Gnosticism, that you, there's a secret knowledge that will set you free, that will liberate you or emancipate you from the imprisonment of normalcy. And when you have that knowledge, which is queer knowledge, when you become queered, which is to learn to reject the normal and the legitimate on principle, to reject those and oppose them everywhere they show up, then you can liberate yourself from the uh, impositions of a uh, society that's got you locked in chains. What, what Judith Butler, quoting from Michel Foucault, said is that it's, the, it's not so much that the body imprisons the soul, it's that the soul imprisons the body. What they mean is that the social environment, because it's a soci sociological religion, and the sociology sets it up so that you believe you have to be a certain way, so then you script that, that's their wording, you write that onto your body, so society tells you you're male, so you should be a man, and so you make yourself into a man, which they think is a fiction, and now you're trapped within that form. So, so they look at them queer and drag as a liberating force. That's right. Liberating, emancipating. These are the words they use constantly for what they're doing. Liberating from yeah, so, the so prison I, of we're being. we're in captivity and we want to be free. That's right. To find out who we really are. And who we really are is queer, without definition, without meaning. Free to give ourselves our own definition, our own meaning, no matter what it is, no matter where it comes from, no matter what. So can you build out a little bit more? You and I have fun when we call these people wizards. Yeah. Well, I, we do that in the book too, by the way. So we actually do call them wizards. We describe educators, the queer educators in the classroom. They're activists. We say that they work like sorcerers to put the kids under spells open their minds to the queer possibilities around them. And what this actually is, is it's a form of cognitive and emotional distortion that they put people in. It's usually do something that's mixing a truth with a lie. They tell the kids, maybe you feel uncomfortable with your body. That might be true. That means maybe you're not the gender you were assigned at birth or whatever. Well, that's false. That's a lie. So James, you, you, you respect how people take yes. religion seriously, and you love the Bible, sure. and you know the Bible well, and it's, it's an objectively beautiful piece of literature. I also believe it's the Word of God. It is hard not for me to take the next step that this is diabolical and from the pit of hell. Oh, I agree. I mean, I, I said with you on stage I that it opens the pit to hell. So. Explain what you mean by that. So who is, who is Satan? He's the accuser. And so what does he do? He deceives. He misleads you. He mixes a truth with a lie. He doesn't just come out and necessarily lie. He mixes truths and lies to deceive. No, that's exactly right.